first characteristic of the teacher of God uh, and the teacher's man. And everything that I've done and everything that I've experienced, all the peace and joy and happiness, all the mystical experiences, is really based in trust. Trust in God, trust in the Holy Spirit. And what it's done is it's allowed me to follow what Jesus said was, you know, take no thought for what you should wear and eat and seek first the kingdom of heaven. And actually, I've been able to travel around much like Jesus and the apostles since 1991, just uh, being taken in, going where I'm invited. Uh, I just go where I'm invited in the sense that I'm not trying to uh, proselytize or preach or convince anybody of anything. It's, it's an inner job. And uh, this Genesis Foundation and the book says is, it's just what is. And it's, for me, it's, it's very natural. It's what always has been our natural state. And it's a joy for me to go around and teach it over and over and over and express it because it's very, very natural and it's how I, how I stay aware of it, actually, is by giving it away and extending it. So, at the beginning, you know, I had many long discussions with Jesus about, you know, well, I don't know about heaven, but, uh, you know, in, in this realm, money doesn't grow on trees, and the typical discussions back and forth. What I've had to do is, is had to trust that uh, everything would be provided, and that I would go wherever I was called to go, and until last year, I didn't even have a passport, but that all of a sudden invitations and opportunities started coming in overseas. So I went through the process. I said, I need one of those thingamajiggies. And my friend Dave Powell said, you need a passport. Dave. It's, you've got to have a passport to travel. So that was something that I didn't even foresee happening. But there's been quite a few international travels as well. So this, to me, spirituality has to be practical to be what it is. You know, we don't need another theology. In so many theologies and so many philosophies on the planet, but what everybody is really searching for is an experience, and that's what these gatherings are about, to really go inward and say, okay, how do I apply this in this situation, or what about this topic? And the questions about the different topics, uh, they really are, have been recorded over and over and over, and in one sense, you might say that the Bible and many spiritual paths and the Course in Miracles as well are like a road map uh, to go deep into your soul and to discover your soul. And it's like uh, Jesus or Buddha or whatever leaving little breadcrumb trails you know, saying, here you go, just keep walking along, there's going to be some pitfalls, uh, just keep following these signs and symbols and have the desire and have the willingness and you shall experience the same thing that the, the avatars and the saints and the mystics have talked about for centuries. And now the quantum physicists are talking about the same thing that the saints and the mystics are talking about. So I just want to again welcome everybody here. And uh, I'm an open book, so I'm open to all kinds of questions uh, about my life, about uh, metaphysics in general, of course. I, I talk about and from a state of self-realization or enlightenment, so to me, I'm not affiliated with any particular system, uh, including A Course in Miracles anymore, or any particular culture, country, uh, organization. Um, people have asked me on television, you know, are you a Christian? <laughs> and I just go like this, are you a Course in Miracles teacher? You know, when the woman was on one of the cable TV shows, was like, are you human? Uh, the more you get into this experience of living in the present moment, it feels very, very expansive, and it feels like you are not limited in any way. And that's how my life feels now. I, I live a life of happiness and joy. It is constant. It does not uh, vary or deviate. Uh, I have a group of people that are with me in this um, a little house called the Peace House. It's a little house built in 1847 uh, that I have in Cincinnati. And uh, Chris and Ruth are with me today. They come from uh, California. And uh, just met each of them very uh, recently. It's been maybe a couple of 
couple of weeks and it was even less. It was, was it last week or? Last Friday. Last Friday, okay. Well, here they are with me in Las Vegas. Uh, for me, my life is very spontaneous, so I have, I enjoy traveling around with, with people and we're all here on this uh, miraculous uh, adventure here to Las Vegas. Uh, just been having, having a wonderful time in the van on the way down. And uh, somebody, two more people come. Uh, so it's it's very much of a free flow. Uh, my life is is very spontaneous in the sense that I don't uh, have agendas or I don't come with any expectations. It's very childlike. It's almost like a childlike sense of glee. And that's why I don't get, ever get disappointed because I don't have any expectations. So if I show up and I'm the only one, then there, of course there is only one anyway. <laughs> so we are a unity, a unity kind of center. And, uh, so that's what makes the, the joy. And also, I would say that um, it's taken a lot of questioning in the sense that, you know, we've all seen the, the people at the airports and you know, our Krishna's and the flowers and God is love and la la la. And, and it's true. It really is true. That's the core of it. It's like the science says, God is. And yet when Jesus came, he had a lot to say. And when Buddha came, he had a lot to say. And to simply say the words, God is, uh, there is a part of the Course in Miracles workbook where Jesus says, we say God is and we cease to speak. So he's kind of describing heaven. They don't have a lot of... Uh, chatter and discussions and whatever going on and pure bliss and stillness and everything is fully known automatically, telepathically. Uh, and words, Jesus says, are symbols of symbols twice removed from reality. Uh, that's quite an interesting comment on words. <laughs> symbols of symbols twice removed from reality. Very crude instruments. And I think a lot of us have heard like Mozart and Beethoven and songs that we felt like well up in us, like we were connected to the whole universe, like we were experiencing a glimmer of infinity, and sometimes there's not words even involved. Uh, we've had relationships where we've been able to look in somebody's eyes just for a moment, feel completely connected with them and with everyone. Uh, we've had experiences when we've been maybe in the desert or walking by the ocean or whatever, where we feel communion with everything. So clearly, this state of mind of remembrance of God is, is there for us, and we get glimmers of it. And when we come together, this is our opportunity to really look at the obstacles. What is keeping the mind from experiencing that bliss always? That's really what the question is. If it's there, and it's available, and it's accessible, then that's a burning kind of passion of, for many. It's like, what is in the way of me experiencing that in a consistent way? I would say that the belief in sacrifice is, is a block. Uh, if you believe that to follow God, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Uh, very much like the old Christian teachings about Jesus having to be the ransom to pay the price for the sinners. That's, of course, a pretty overt example of sacrifice. But for all of us, really, who are opening to God, the real question is, do we really believe we have to give up something of real value to experience who we are? And my answer to that is no. There is nothing of real value that has to be given up to experience who you are. For me, I feel like my whole life has been uh, blessed with grace where I see that, that everything that I need to be who I am and express who I am, even in time and space, is provided effortlessly. So there's no sense of struggle there's no sense of uh, striving, or pushing, or forcing. Uh, I, even when people, a friend of mine came years ago,
ago and said, well, if you're going to be traveling all over the world and you're going to need a nonprofit organization uh, to help handle some of the things that you do, I said, well, okay, if you want to do it. And so he uh, formed it and it kind of got dropped in my lap. I had to answer some questions for the IRS. Uh, you would imagine typical things. They want to know that you're going to be, uh, you know, disseminating things and not uh, trying to amass a fortune <laughs> under the name of God or something. So I got asked questions about that, responded. That flowed very easily. Um, invitations have come in so that I've, I've had, uh, I talked to Dennis a, a while ago. We had a nice phone conversation, so I put, had a little map where I put a little X by uh, Las Vegas. And I had a little map of the United States and Canada with little X marks little invitations that have come in, and now the access is starting to appear in different parts of the world, Ghana, and, uh, uh, over in you know, Europe, and uh, Canary Islands, and different places that, that are just starting to come in as invitations. But for me, that's, that's very important to me, because I'm not trying to go out and convince anybody. I'm not trying to get followers. I'm not trying to build an organization. In fact, I'm not trying to heal the world. A Course in Miracles teaches, seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. So you might say that the prayer has been, uh, heal me, show, heal my mind, heal my perception, uh, help me see the world the way that you see the world. Help me see the world in a way where if I was ever hanging on a cross, I could say and being forgive them for they know not what they do without any kind of sense of, of hurt or animosity or regret. Uh, from a place of bliss and peace, uh, to be able to look upon the world without any sense of a grievance, not the slightest tinge of grievance. And so that has been my prayer. And all I can say is I'm very happy. I go around and I have a lot of joy and laughter. And it doesn't matter whether I'm in the slums of Argentina or uh, Central America or Spain, or if I'm in, uh, in mansions. And I have done gatherings in mansions. There's one the mansion with five fireplaces in it and hold up with people. I, I really don't make any distinctions uh, anymore among people. Also with the gatherings, I think there's an interesting thing in a lot of religions like Christianity and some religions where they have this distinction between believers and unbelievers. I don't understand that anymore. Uh, to me, everyone I see is a reflection of my mind, so I don't have that category of believers and unbelievers. I enjoy gatherings when, um, when people show up and say, I was in Texas and uh, I was doing a gathering there, of course, in Miracles. There's an elderly man there, he's about 76 years old, and he said, Hello, my name is Arthur, and I'm an atheist. And I believe that if there is a God, that uh, God's name is Arthur. <laughs> and he said, uh, I also believe that we're all part of one mind, and that we're all completely connected. Hey, Arthur! <laughs> and so Arthur the Atheist kept showing up with a big grin on his face. He would just sit there at all my gatherings with a big grin from ear to ear. Uh, and so finally, the last gathering I saw him, uh, he, he was uh, legally blind, so they had to like, drive him in the evening to the gathering. And he sat there, hardly said a word, uh, just grinning from ear to ear. The happiest atheist I've ever seen. And finally, at the end, he said, uh, you know what, if there is a God, uh, I think it's probably like a God of a course in miracles, a God of pure love. Uh, he said, I guess the reason I say that I'm an atheist is just because I can't believe in a God that would punish anybody. I can't believe in a God that would uh, be judging me uh, or that would turn anyone away. Hey, Arthur! <laughs> Again, <laughs> atheist. Who cares uh, what anybody even calls themselves? 
And in the end, uh, if forgiveness, as Jesus teaches, is the one belief that leads away from all other illusions, then all those other belief systems and all those other stepping stones must be illusions themselves. So in the end, who we are, our unity, our oneness, is literally beyond belief. It's an experience beyond belief. So I figure, who am I to judge? You know, agnostic, atheist, Jew, Hindu, you know, what, whatever. You know, and someone can say, I believe in this totem pole. Well, I'm going to have a great time. In fact, we, we were at Bruce last night, we had a gentleman who came over and he, he had quite a lot to say. <laughs> and uh, he was just adorable. We were there with him and he was so sweet and we ended up just hugging and long hugs and and off he went uh, with his little red Bible, and his wife says she's in a box. And uh, we just had a, a wonderful, wonderful time. But that's, to me, I find that uh, people ask me about going to, to gatherings, and they say it must be fun going to all these spiritual gatherings and conferences and whatever around the Course in Miracles groups. And I said, oh, I'd miss the whole journey if I thought of it that way. Most people I meet are, you know, waitresses, people in laundromats, rest areas, you know, hostess, uh, stewardesses, uh, bus drivers, ferry drivers, you know, passengers. I'd say literally the majority of the people I meet up in the 90-some percentile uh, don't know what the word metaphysical means. Uh, and I have so much fun with all of them. Uh, it makes no difference. Uh, whether somebody believes that there's something beyond the physical or not. Uh, because joy is an experience, it's a, it's a present moment experience. And, for example, I'm traveling once through, I think it was Missouri, St. Louis, around St. Louis, and uh, I stopped at a restaurant with a few people, and this waitress came out, and it was her first night. She was just shaking. She was so afraid. She'd never waited on a table before. She was so afraid she was going to mess up, and so she came up to take the order. She was trembling. And I took one look at her, and I, I laughed, and I said, uh, you know what? You can bring the order and dump it right in my lap, and I would still give you a big, fat tip. And she just took a deep breath and smiled, and then she turned into like a pro. She was like gliding <laughs> along. It was like that one comment was like, it just like popped her out of this concern that she was going to make a mistake. Because there was laughter and there was like a, an instant genius rapport and an ease. And to me, that's what this is about. It's not so much always speaking high metaphysical principles that we talk about sometimes in these groups. Uh, as with children and dogs and cats, uh, they're not much interested in metaphysics. Uh, but they. They love to gaze in your eyes, and they love to, to help hold you and hug you and be helped. And so this is what I mean by the living experience.